Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will clearly understand the importance of interrupts with respect to embedded programming. Also, we will understand some real cool tips about how do we write a very good interrupt programming code with embedded systems. Also, we will understand the difference between interrupt and polling with a very simple yet a classical example. Then I will quickly take you through the classifications of interrupts, what it can be with reference to a very simple microprocessor 8085 so that you can understand points very clearly by taking it as a reference. Can we go on to the session? Yeah, we will step in. First, let's understand what is an interrupt. Let's understand this point. Interrupt is an option or a way through which you can give an input to the system. That's all. You can give input to the system through interrupts. That's it. Interrupt is one of the simplest options that one can follow towards telling a system that I need something from you. That's all. There are two options available for you. One is polling, another one is interrupt. Which one will you prefer? Very simple. Let me tell you, both are equally important and interrupt cannot be kicked out or polling cannot be kicked out. Both have its own applications. I'll give you a simple application example sometime later. But now let's understand the difference in a very simple manner. A professor is teaching in the class. He's a very strict professor and he does not want anybody to open their mouth during the time he gives the lecture. But after the lecture is delivered, he wants to understand if everybody clearly have understood whatever he has taught. So he'll now start asking question. Candidate 1, have you understood? Candidate 2, have you understood? Candidate 3, have you understood? Likewise, if there are 20 students, he will ask each and every student in this case where it is called as polling. The professor is polling with the attached students to see if they need his service. The microprocessor checks with the attached peripherals to see if the peripherals need the service is called polling. I have a microprocessor. There are peripherals attached to it. The microprocessor going around to see if the peripherals need the service from the microprocessor is called polling. Now what is interrupt? The same professor has become very flexible and he allows anybody to talk or anybody to ask questions during the time of class. Now in that case, he is teaching a topic and a student gets up and asks a question. This is called interrupt. The peripherals attached asking the microprocessor for a service is called interrupt. The microprocessor asking the peripherals if they need service is called polling. Whereas the peripherals asking the microprocessor that they need or it needs the service from the microprocessor is called interrupt. That's all I made it very simple. Where do we go for polling? Where do we go for interrupts? For an instance, we have got a lot of modern cars available these days with a lot of safety features. It keeps checking all the attached components if they are all fine and that is called polling. The microprocessor, the centralized microprocessor would go ahead and start asking for the data from each of the attached units that polls. But airbag is a simple example where it is interrupt. When there is an accident, that's an interrupt and immediately airbag comes out. That's it. That's the easiest way you can understand. Now, what happens actually classically when an interrupt happens? Very simple. It's called context switching. I'm having a phone now. I'm playing a game or listening to a song. My father calls me or somebody calls me. What I, uh, what I immediately do, the call appears as the highest priority stuff. I attend the call. And once the call is over, once the uh, conversation is over, what happens is we get back to the same thing that we had been doing in the past. So this is called a context switching. The context from the game has been switched to the phone call and it is again switched back to the previous one that we had been doing. This is the simple funda that happens whenever there is an interrupt or whenever uh, there is an external request coming in terms of interrupt. So what are all the things that will be copied or what are all the things that will be needed to do this context switching? Very simple. Program status word. It's nothing but a flag register you can call it. The status of all the flags, the CPU register status, the stack pointer details, all these have to be stored. And once my game is being played, there will be some stats related to it. Some data have to be stored. Once I have to come back, I need to start from the same place. So those data will be acquired and it will be stored somewhere. I'll now move the attention to the call. I attend the call. The context is different. I'll complete the call. Once I come back, I need to start from the place where I have left. So whatever I have stored already can be retrieved and I can continue my work. This is exactly what is happening whenever there is an external request coming to do something on a higher priority. An interrupt is just like a subroutine name. Remember, it is just like a function or a subroutine. When called, it should go and pull the corresponding piece of small code which will do certain activities. That's all. The piece of code that you are calling will be residing in some location most of the time. And the way you call it is called as interrupt. And the piece of code that we are calling, right, it's called as interrupt service routine. 
and the interrupts can be of higher priority or lower priority it can be maskable or non maskable so these are all the terms that you need to understand i'll clarify it a little later with a simple example with 8085 now high priority interrupts can never be blocked for an instance i am taking a class somebody who is uh, at the higher level than me is crossing and he is asking me a question they cannot be interrupted they cannot be told that i am sorry i cannot answer you now but i am talking to somebody and that person is at on par with me or slower than me in the in terms of the uh, responsibilities and some other person is coming and talking to me in that case i'll tell this person that please wait i'll answer that person and come back so some interrupts are stoppable some interrupts cannot be so they are called high priority interrupts and these are called lower priority interrupts i'll give you a, a classical example here for example i am sitting in my cabin uh, one student is coming and asking question he is asking a very valid and a vital question i feel that it's a high priority question some other student is coming while i'm having a conversation with this student i'll say that no i cannot stop i'll continue this i will solve this and then i'll come back to the next one this is high priority this question was very interesting and a very valid question so i spend more time on that very simple example now i get another student he is asking me a question but the question is not so good but still i was answering but at the same time there is another question which is coming parallelly so i would like to listen to the question so this is called low priority that's it this is the simplest way that you can understand how a high priority and the low priority interrupts can be treated now remember if two high priority interrupts are occurring at the same time that could also happen but might not be a possibility all time in that case we can if if there are two interrupts and one is higher and one is lower there is no problem higher will be respected if two interrupts are of the same priority then we can go with having the polling to serve the high priority interrupts so remember polling comes here as well it's a very important point now there are some best practices that you can always follow when you start coding with interrupts remember all these are very important interview questions as well please prioritize your interrupts carefully keep the interrupt service routines very short please understand only critical tasks are expected to be done by the interrupts keep the interrupts very simple avoid calling functions within functions it's not a right practice when you go in into interrupts and avoid wait you have got wait functions right avoid wait avoid time intensive logic within interrupts because you are holding something for a long time and other process could wait which could as well be important and use flags when i am doing something i can use a lot of flags and i can transfer the control immediately when that condition is met please use a lot of flags and it's a gift for programmers to really write interrupt coding and please use volatile a keyword appropriately many of us do not use it unfortunately but it has to be used that way use volatile keyword appropriately a variable should be declared volatile whenever its value can be changed by something beyond the control of the code section in which it appears this is where we are using volatile please remember volatile is a wonderful option when you go for interrupts for the very reason that the definition explains very clearly what it does we can use volatile and do not disable interrupts many of us have the habit of disabling interrupts at times we should not do that and disabling interrupts is not required by the way why do we disable interrupts we need not do that this could prove dangerous at times and please do not disable interrupts keep it enabled now when i take 8085 as an example this is the simplest of the microprocessors that you can really understand well where we have got interrupts available in front of us trap rst 7.5 6.5 5.5 and intr now if you see the priority is given maskability is given priority trap is the first priority it is the highest priority interrupt it is not maskable and it has got a vector address here you can see that this address is nothing but the location where this particular interrupt code sits similarly rst 7.5 is the highest priority but this is maskable second highest priority but this is maskable 6.5 maskable 7.5 sorry 7.5 6.5 5.5 all these are maskable and they are of second third and fourth priority respectively now if you see that they all have locations but the fifth one if you see here it is intr and it is of the fifth priority it is also maskable but there is no location why very simple i'll clarify this as well the interrupt that you are using or handling may be a vector interrupt or non vector interrupt vector interrupt are those who have got addresses already allocated and their location is well known non vector interrupt are those where their address is not known already and they will have to be sent externally by a device intr is such a thing where we do not know where it sits we do not have a predefined location for it now what is maskable interrupt maskable interrupt is something we can disable we can stop 
right non maskable we cannot do that we cannot stop that they are of the highest priority and they will run and you cannot stop it an interrupt can be software or hardware oriented software interrupt can be run with instructions allocated for it whereas hardware interrupt can be uh, done or accomplished with the pins dedicatedly allocated for it for example rst 0 to 7 in uh, 8085 they are all they can all be handled through software similarly we have got hardware interrupts available which we can use through the appropriate pins allocated for that particular operation to be done that's it i made a very clear session i believe in case you have any questions please go ahead and type it in the comment sections i'll be able to answer them if you like the channel and the content please give a thumbs up and subscribe thank you very much